This is a fun question. I'm going to phrase it as a past tense because this is coming out after the Super Bowl. But Newt from Discord asked, the Bengals were, you like how I changed that there, were a plus 6,000 to win the Super Bowl. Which NBA team with similar odds would be able to pull it off this year? Newt was kind enough to send a screenshot of DraftKings odds. Um, use WinBet instead. But he gave us DraftKings, so that's, that's what I'm going to use. But, but go to WinBet, partner of Blue Wire, and bet with them. So the teams that I'm looking at, I'm going to throw them at you. I define the similar odds very arbitrarily where I just looked at the teams that I think deserve to be mentioned. And we have like about 10. The Nuggets. This, have, is, this is to win the 2021-22 title? Yes. Okay. Have a Bengals-like run. So my cutoff was they have the Cleveland Cavaliers at plus 5,500. And I didn't include the Cavaliers or the Celtics at plus 4,000 or the Nuggets at plus 3,500 because if Murray or Porter Jr. comes back, right. I didn't include the Mavericks at plus 4,000. So the teams that I included, and you can let me know if you disagree with any of these, uh, there's the LA Clippers who are plus 6,000 like the Bengals were. The Toronto Raptors are plus 10,000. The Hawks are plus 10,000. The Timberwolves are plus 15,000. Charlotte is plus 20,000. And the final team I'm going to include, just because... They have C.J. McCollum, but if Zion Williamson comes back, plus 50,000 on the New Orleans Pelicans, which team do you think has the best chance to pull off their Bengals-type run? I think you can make a case for the Clippers just if Paul George is healthy and if Kawhi Leonard somehow returns for a playoff run. You can make a case for the Hawks just because they made it to the Eastern Conference finals last year the roster has gone through so much turmoil but it is getting healthy and is getting all the pieces back in place but I think the Raptors are the answer here because that lineup especially coming out of the trade deadline it's loaded with talent and you know we you've talked about how your your pseudo spicy take is the Raptors winning one playoff series and I believe on the last episode we both did together we, we tried to gauge like how likely a run through the entire East was it's at least possible. You know, I, I don't know that there is a Joe Burrow comparison where you have someone who's, you know, coming off an ACL injury and a mediocre rookie season and explodes and becomes one of the best quarterbacks in the league as a sophomore. I mean, Fred Van Vliet, first time all-star this year, Scotty Barnes up and coming rookie, Gary Trent Jr. exploding out of nowhere. And the list of pieces in Toronto goes on and on. This is a team that, might not have that top end superstar talent that can stack up with the true contenders in the Eastern conference. But if things go right in the playoffs, it is fully capable of winning a seven game series against literally anyone. The, the rappers are going to be my answer. So this is terrible podcasting, Uh, but I agree with everything you just said there. I think if you had to pick the second, most likely, I don't think Kawhi is going to come back this year. So even if you have Paul George, I read out the Clippers, I think it's the Hawks. If, if we were going among the, like, I, I don't want to, it could be the Pelicans is on my, is my point. Just like, if they get into the play-in, Zion's healthy, you have CJ, Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, maybe Willie Green has stopped playing Devontae and CJ McCollum together. Maybe he stopped playing Garrett Temple at all. Maybe they've uncorked Trey Murphy once in a while here. That would just be the, that's the bananas pick because it's like, What could this team be? It's been, I I don't want to say subtly because people watch, I hope people watch the Pelicans, but they've been competent for like the past, like for half the season, basically. Their defense has been around league average. We'll see how it holds up with CJ McCollum there. But like at full strength, they have, they always had one of the scariest offenses. You add CJ to that and they have a terrifying offense. It hinges on Zion though. And so I think the Raptors uh, would be my pick and I think they're the best choice. But I think after them, it, it would have to be the Hawks, right? I think so. Are you willing to totally rule out the Sacramento Kings who are undefeated in the strangely nicknamed Fox and the Ox period? Yes, I'm willing to write that off. Um, yeah, I've, I'm already, people are mad at me on Twitter because they claim that I didn't watch the bonus before he went to the Kings, uh, which as I told our, our Discord members when they asked the question about us covering the league, I said, I can't answer this. Neither Adam nor I watch any games. Uh, speaking of Discord... This question from that guy, Ty, was a spinoff of Newt's. Which team do you feel better about in terms of their 2023 title odds? The LA Clippers or the Denver Nuggets? I don't know if you saw this one, but this is a thinker. It is a tough one because the Clippers are going are 
theoretically at least going to have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George playing together which <laughs> at least theoretically <laughs> works well in theory the Nuggets should have their their full host of players and we've seen how how dangerous that team is with Jokic with Jamal Murray with Michael Porter Jr. I think I'm going to base my answer to this question off my confidence in the supporting casts because we know how good Jokic is. We know how good the theory of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard is. The Nuggets, though, I think have more realistic growth opportunities around the top players because Jamal Murray looked to be ascending to a, an all-star level. Michael Porter Jr. appeared to be on the same trajectory, and I'm willing to write off his early season struggles uh, shooting the ball and basically doing anything else on the basketball court as a product of the back injury that eventually got him shut down. But Bones Highland looks legit. Zeke Naji looks like he could factor into to the lineup. Aaron Gordon is fully meshing with this roster. I just I think from top to bottom, the Nuggets make a little bit more sense, have a little bit more depth, and have a little bit more top end power beyond the marquee players. Yeah, I'm still gonna go with the Clippers because I'm I think the point you make about the depth is important, especially if Bowens Highland factors into that. And we had, there was a conversation in discord about a good comp for Bowens Highland at his ceiling. Uh, I don't know that anyone liked my joke. I said, think like a vaccinated Kyrie, but I, I don't, I, I can't even team. imagine what that looks like. <laughs> Neither can James Harden. Apparently that's why he left. So I, I get it, but you're dealing with like sort of two players coming you're, you're dealing with two players coming back from sort of combustible injuries. Whereas what does Jamal Murray like Jamal Murray look like post ACL? I think of the two, because we're also talking about Michael Porter jr. With another back issue. Uh, I'm, I have more faith in Murray, which is fine. Kawhi is also coming back from a torn ACL. He's injured all the time. It feels like, so I get the risk there. Um, I know Paul George has like kind of become a little bit inj injury prone dealing with elbow stuff, had shoulder stuff last year but I, I trust the top end talent more where Jokic might be or is one of the five best players in the league. Um, I, their number two in LA is better than Denver's number two, whoever you consider it. Mm. The addition of Norman Powell really swings it for me because that was not everything this team was missing. I think you can look at their absence of a, a top tier playmaker. You're just running the offense through Kawhi, Reggie Jackson, Paul George is sort of a weakness for them. But the way that they can play all these different smaller lineups and now defend having Powell, Marcus Morris there, if they keep him around, um, Terrence Mann, Mann is there, and he's made some strides on defense this season. Kawhi, Paul George, already mentioning them. Uh, and Nick Batum, if, I'm assuming he's going to stick around there. So I like them better because they feel like they have the higher ceiling as a, as a two-way team. But that's a really tough question. And I, I think if you are asking me, though, and this is where I'm stepping out of the limb, is do I trust LA's top three players? So let's say Powell, uh, Kawhi, and Paul George to be healthier than Denver's top three? I might not because this sort of feels like a flash in the pan injury for Jamal Murray. Uh, where if, you know, if we're going top three, Michael Porter Jr. is in there, that's scary. But Jokic is an Iron Man himself. So I, I totally get where you're coming from with that. I think it really hinges on Porter's health. Because we, we've seen like medical advancements have, have made ACL injuries time consuming, but not career altering. We've seen players come back with more athleticism, with more explosiveness, without risk of re injury. And because that's the only significant one Murray has suffered, I'm not too concerned about that. A little more with Kawhi, just because of the, the lengthier injury history. Porter's is, is different because he might not ever be the same. And if yeah. that's the case, then the Clippers become the easy choice. Uh, I don't want to rule him returning to that pre-injury level out. And ultimately, like, we don't have insight into that. 